how to beat the basic understanding and concept of the answer to chess. So we know by now that the answer to chess focuses um, crit on critical areas such as key spaces, key pieces, looking to remove pieces from the board strategically and to put pressure on the king or the king area. Nothing wrong with that concept whatsoever. It's an absolutely brilliant concept and I'll stand by that concept. So how do you beat the answer to chess concept? So players that are using the answer to chess concept and they're using it at a nice basic level, um, which we've just outlined, no issues with that. It's a really strong process that they're using. Whether subconsciously or not, that's the type of thing they're using, the answer to chess process. When you see the strong players coming out, targeting appropriately and getting advantages on the board, um, this is the concept that they're using. So how do you beat somebody who is using the answer to concept process really well at a nice basic level? The, the idea is really to look at how you can focus and target your area, your strategy towards the king area and maintain focus on the king area and the weaknesses that you've identified. It's as simple as that. If the difference between being able to beat an answer to chess concept and to equalize with it is focusing on appropriate movements that are going to get you positioned towards the king, the king area and putting pressure on there. The strategical removal of pieces would be minimized as best possible. So you wouldn't spend as much time trying to remove pieces from the board strategically, but you would look to find ways of putting pressure onto the king or the king area. Not as soon as possible, it's not quick and dirty tactics type thing. It's putting pressure, all the moves that you make would be aiming towards putting that pressure onto the king area. So this game here, we developed the knight and we're developing the other knight. So it all looks pretty normal and pretty straightforward. There's nothing magical about anything to do with chess. It may feel magical once you start using the answer process even more advanced. But in the meantime, what we're basically looking at is taking it up a notch from the basic answer process, maybe take it to the intermediate process. Okay, because there is another level above you know the intermediate for using the advanced process for uh, the answer process so for now we're looking at how we can beat the basic understanding of the answer process so we're looking at the intermediate level so they've captured captured and we've caught, uh, caught the pawn so all that's pretty straightforward nice and steady away so capture through the center and they, they've caught with their knife so where is the difference now at this moment in time, we need to get a, a balance of keeping our king safe, which is pretty straightforward. So the opponent's playing well, they're defending well. And what advantage in this particular game I felt was that because of the movement of their knight, they lost a little bit of a tempo. So they're moving their knight again. So we castled and got our king safe first. So it's small potatoes, it's nothing major. They developed the bishop. So now this is the key area, I believe, throughout the game. At this point here, targeting. So the opponent may believe that that bishop is targeting something. Um, it doesn't really look like it's an effective or essential m maneuver in the art of the game so are they looking to basically queenside castle they seem to have lost tempo in terms of the king's safety so is the target area for us now looking towards here are we focusing on that area we developed the knight attacking this um 
bishop that has jumped into no man's land as we can see and they brought the queen out defending a smaller piece I can see probably the rationale behind the pieces being in these positions here because they are in front of our king area but there's no attack on the king area there's nothing major going on towards our king area so there's no pressure and that's the sort of that's the difference between understanding the proper more intermediate level answer process we can now bring our knight back it's attacking a higher piece does have sites of potentially coming here doing a bit of disturbance it can always come back around again to attack the bishop could have taken the bishop but we've got bigger fish to fry on this side because as we said potentially coming towards here yes he does have these pieces like we said but there's nothing major going at the minute so he's allowed his queen to be put in a position to be attacked by a smaller piece so the queen has to move again so we're almost managing the way the opponent is moving on the board now so we bring our knight pawn up the pawn is doing a nice job it's just protecting this area here it's an effective piece but stopping the knight from traversing any further down but it's also allowing this little secret maneuver with the queen to potentially come to any of these spots here to start targeting these key areas because it looks like the opponent is wanting to go on queenside castle their king is not safe their king is airy so we've already mobilized our knight to potentially get into this position now we're protecting with the pawn but also looking to eye up any potential attack position that we can get with the queen with the rook with the bishop yep getting towards this side of um, the table so there's a lot of pressure already building up towards the king area and the opponent doesn't realize it it's for you as an individual chess player to know what stage you're at it doesn't need to be identifiable on the chessboard it's probably better more so that it is a stealth attack that you're building up nice and steadily because like we said it's not quick and dirty tactics this is a this is the answer process each stage breaking down how you're strategically going to get to overpower the king so that is the difference between the basic understanding of the um, answer process and the intermediate and they did castle queenside so they obviously didn't feel the pressure that we were potentially putting on which is good because our piece is ready to rock and roll so we developed the queen it's brought the bishop back now so he's in total defense mode here but he's like two moves behind so we can now bring our bishop to attack his queen a smaller piece attacking a higher piece so this is that loss in tempo key to the development of the rest of this game so he has to move the queen now our smaller piece can attack his higher piece but also attacking the bishop as well also really mainly attacking this pawn here if we could get our queen to this position then you're looking at some sort of checkmate type position here so again this is only like move 16 no move 15 sorry so now the queen's moved still conscious yeah potential for any attacks on our king area there's nothing major going on so there's nothing to worry about like i say i think they're probably two moves behind so we bring the queen here to this position looking to go for the checkmate thing that we're talking about they push the pawn so looking at all of the avenues we can squeeze the queen through and there is nothing really that can actually come and protect and checkmate so that is the, the huge difference between the basic understanding of the answer process and then taking it a little bit further into the intermediate level of understanding how to use the answer process. It is focused purely on getting the transitions. The strategy is focused on delivering pressure towards the king and the king area with less 
strategical removal of pieces from the board. That is the difference between the intermediate and the basic level answer to chess. So how do we develop the answer to chess at an intermediate level, at a, a different level to the basic level? Take you through a game here. So we've currently got to this state where basically we're understanding now as part of intermediate level, it is more about being able to put pressure on the king area focusing on the king area rather than the strategical removal of pieces from the board we're trying to reduce the amount of those types of actions and focusing more on moves that are going to put pressure on the king or the king area to help us to reduce down as well at some stage towards getting towards the king area so in this particular game we attack the queen with the support from our queen here with the bishop so through the bishop obviously through the queen is of obviously the rook our opponent has spent quite a bit of time you know defending their king area wrapping their pieces around their king you know to sort of protect the king again that is a, a false analogy in terms of developing your own chess um to gain advantages in any particular games um, the pieces must be used to develop towards the king area uh, to attack to pressure um, fencing with the pieces really does lose your tempo loses your time and then eventually loses position on the board so our opponent plumped for taking the knight so we captured the knight simple as, as b there and then captured the rook so we're up the exchange at this point in time now the key thing is to remember and it is uh, pretty equal apart from the exchange side of things the rook being taken is how then do we fashion putting pressure towards the king area not looking at really <clears throat> reducing down pieces it's more position on the board our opponent moved the king again potentially might have been a loss in tempo it's not really attacking anything of ours it's not attacking the king area so gives us time to place our pieces appropriately to prevent them from attacking so this poor move here just preventing the knight from jumping in to potentially put an attack on our king area so the knight then jumps to the middle here which is basically attacking this pawn here superfluous attacks really don't have any weight in the intermediate answer process because the pawn can actually just come back now simply attacking the knight so the knight's now doing a dance by itself looking to attack another piece which is the bishop which is easily supported but also aligns our rook in front of the big gun the queen so you have to be mindful of how things are going to land so they, they decide to then attack our queen but our queen can come for this particular position here looking for the intermediate aspect which is putting pressure towards the king area like i've mentioned previously it's better to do your answer process especially in the intermediate level especially if you're playing against somebody who knows the answer process and they understand strategically removing pieces from the board and their positioning isn't too bad either how do you then get advantages against that type of player this is the type of um, tutorial that we're covering today in that aspect it's better to do it stealthily if they can see it coming sometimes they can block it off at this moment in time there's no attempt at blocking off anything because it doesn't look like a real threat but we have a rook we have a queen lined up on this deadly file here so they push the pawn protecting the knight this is the difference between the intermediate answer process and the basic understanding of the answer process 
I believe our opponent would have been better looking to develop more pieces attacking our our king area I don't know what move that would be but something to make me think well okay you need to do something I want to manage how you move on the board but this particular move here really didn't put any frighteners on us so we could attack this piece with a, a lesser piece so it basically forcing them to make a decision as to what it wants to do and that gives us a lovely power base as we mentioned before powering through onto this file also this pawn is weak now in front of the king area so this they're supporting with their pawn so they're losing tempo after tempo in terms of developing an attack process around our king area but they're giving us more power towards their king area so we push onto the pawn now looking to open up and they're looking to stabilize this position in front of their king area little do they know they're making their king even weaker by these pawn moves looking to protect the king so we capture they capture back now we can make some space towards putting pressure even more towards the king area with support from the rooks etc so the queen comes down now looking to defend that area uh, again it's not putting any threat on us the biggest difference as we can see in this game is that who is threatening who who is putting the the advantages their way so we're creating more advantages towards their king area and they probably would have been better putting pressure on our king somehow, some way. So we double up. And the rook now is attacking a small, tiny, minor piece here. So we can look to exchange off the queen. And he doubles up and protects the queen. So again, losing tempo and time in terms of putting any kind of pressure towards our king area so again losing that advantage in terms of the answer process so our queen can now freely take the pawn here because we don't need to take the queen making more space around their king area now they're looking to exchange off the queens which we can gladly do because what do we have we have rook potentially coming here rook potentially coming there to manage a back ranker of some sort the currently the bishop is on the other side of the board the rook is stuck here by itself protecting a pawn here so we bring the rook up putting a check on again obviously it's targeting this pawn but don't want to lose time capturing a pawn when there's bigger fish to fry potentially by bringing this other rook up here so we bring the rook up and at this point the opponent resigned so that is the difference between intermediate answer process and a basic understanding of the answer process. So they push through the center and we capture. Captures back, to all intents and purposes, could be a drawn position. With our answer process, we're looking at how can we, as the ultimate, how can we disturb the king? How can we get to the king to either get a checkmate on the king to disturb the area around the king if there's pieces in front of the king then we, we want to strategically remove them from the board but our ultimate goal is how can we get to the king and disturb the king and keep the pressure on the king or the king area or reduce down the amount of pieces that the opponent has so that they capitulate and reside so the knight came through so we went for attacking the king area with the bishop x-raying through to the king simple process and they do the same thing but they're attacking our queen with their process so we can safely go and castle so we're feeling fairly comfortable and the queen is attacking a smaller piece it should really be the other way around you know smaller pieces attacking the higher pieces and it's these small details that really do separate quality answer concept processes from the standard answer process 
which they have no issues with in terms of going for critical pieces, going for pieces that are unprotected, you know, those nice basic good concepts. But to really take it over and above, to look at it in, in terms of how do you take advantage of somebody who is really good at that, using that type of answer process, you need to look a little bit further and say, am I putting pressure on the king or the king area first? Or am I putting pressure on a minor piece that really is not really worth my time using a higher piece to actually attack it? Bishop takes the knight. So the threat now is no longer there for the queen. And the capture back with the pawn. So we develop our knight which has got uh, many aspects to the development of that knight a smaller piece attacking the higher piece you know potentially attacking the queen on this side here looking to potentially develop the bishop out at some stage to basically look to attack if they're going to queenside castle we're very conscious that they haven't developed their pieces to kingside castle so whether they were going to risk going for queenside castling would be a very big risk because the pawns are all shot on that area. So they captured and we captured with the queen. We're very conscious that this capture really does put us in a nice position attacking the wheat pawn which is only supported by the king at the moment. Queen captures a pawn so again goes back to that same point of attacking a piece with such a major piece to capture such a small piece which doesn't improve the position on the board in any way shape or form time could have been probably better spent developing these pieces here for king safety that is the paramount thing one of the key, the key things are putting pressure on the opponent's king or the king area but also about protecting your own king and keeping that safe from any threats or smotherications <laughs> smothering so our opponent is overworked the queen attacking small minor areas and not developed his team working his pieces together so as you can see we're now attacking the queen with a smaller piece which is the rook so they have to respond now they're looking to exchange off the queen <clears throat> So they can do that quite freely and we're willing to take a good stab at grabbing this pawn, putting pressure onto their queen because we're in a nice position on the board, feeling fairly comfortable with the position that we've got, nice targeting. If the pawn does take, our queen can take the pawn, then we're going to be putting pressure onto the king area here with the support of the rook. So it's a nice sacrifice if you like and they do capture so we bring the queen through and the key thing is the queen is also on the rook which is unsupported at the moment so if they're looking to bring the rook here then that's going to be a checkmate if they move the rook slightly to the side we can continue with uh, another basic checkmate type situation so there's pressure in the early part of the game this is only move 12 and it's appropriate targeting based on what the opponent has actually given to us we didn't rush this position at all and the plan was to make sure that our pieces were working together and we landed in this position so the queen now is coming to defend but it's not defending the rook in the corner at this, at this point the opponent resigned so this was um, quite a surprising sort of game against a much higher rated player, 1855.